I said, DL, how does that uplift our community? And again, I don't know what y'all trying to insinuate, but brother, what you doing? It got so ugly that my attorney had to send a cease and desist. So it never aired. Okay, you saw Monique say that she had to have her attorney get former fellow comedian D.L. Hoogley to not air a portion of a radio interview that she did on D.L. Hoogley's syndicated radio show, Game of Do You Rather, because she didn't like the questions that was asked of her and she felt that it was rooted and mean and spiteful. Yes, this question that was triggered for fellow content creators who are podcasters or who interview guests on their YouTube podcast channel like Shannon Sharp does, what rights do you have when a guest requests that an interview does not be aired or a segment be taken down? Like, what can you do about that? What are your rights? So first, let's listen to the rest of Monique's complaint. And then on the other side, we're going to discuss uh, the cease and desist letter that she said she had to send. I say, what did DL do? I do DL's t uh, radio show. Yes. DL Hughley is not there. His team is there. Mm -hmm. And Shannon, we having a great time. I mean, baby, we having a great time. We going for back and forth. When we get to the end of the show, they said, Monique, we want to play a game of would you rather. Let's go. Would you rather your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom or Corinne Steffens without one? I said to the team, how does that uplift our community? I said, sister, and her name is Jasmine. How could you ask another sister that? I call D.L. Hughley on the phone. I say, hey, baby. Yeah. Huh? That's how he responds. Yeah. It was getting crazy. Right. I'm like, just let me get on the phone with my brother. And his exact words, well, that's how we do it. And again, I don't know what y'all trying to insinuate, but brother, what you doing? Like I said, that's just how we do it. So it is what it is. Now, it got so ugly that my attorney had to send a cease and desist, so it never aired. We have receipts to everything we're saying. Okay, before we discuss the cease and desist letter, let's hear D.L. Hoogley responded specifically to the portion of her interview where she said that she had to get her lawyers involved. She came on my radio show, and I wasn't there at the time, and uh, uh, my co-host Jasmine Sanders played a game that we played all the time with everybody called Would You Rather. She apparently was so offended by that that she says she got off, she called me. Monique did, and she said I was very dismissive, like, huh? Monique's a liar. When Monique did call me, I heard her, her complaints, I listened to her, and I pulled the segment. So if I had been as dismissive as she alleges I was, that segment would have aired. It didn't because I respected her wishes. She's a liar. Now we have all the context. Let's talk about the law. So a cease and desist letter. What is it? A cease and, desist, cease and desist letter is a letter that you would send before you file a lawsuit, before you file a claim, letting the other party know that they need to stop doing it. It's usually used for intellectual property. So if someone uses your trademark or someone's using your content without your permission. Also, we all have the, the right to publicity. So if they said, for example, even if you're not a celebrity and someone takes a picture of you and puts it on a shirt and starts selling it and making money off of your image without your permission or advanced knowledge. Now you can also ask for a cease and desist for them to stop it. Finally, if someone's doing something just harmful to you, just generally that implicates other laws, you can send them a cease and desist letter saying, if you don't stop this, I'm going to file a lawsuit. So it's a, something you send before you actually file the lawsuit. Right now, the question is that how about when someone willingly and voluntarily goes on your show and then asks for it to be taken down legally, are you obligated to take it down? The answer is no, you're not in one way. It could be an uphill battle, but one way to avoid the uphill battle is to have your guest sign a podcast release before you do the interview. So they are aware of the stuff that you said that you're going to release it. So it's probably a good idea to, to have them sign it before they do the interview, because maybe after they do the interview, they may realize, oh, I don't want this aired, but they would have already signed it. So to protect you, um, have them sign it before. Now, you may be in a position where the guest that you're asking to interview has a higher cachet. They're more well known and they may say no. <laughs> We're not following that, in which case that's okay. But you still, even if they don't sign it, you still have the rights once they agree. And once they don't use these buzzwords off the record, and this again is why you're lucky to have me because I, I'm a former journalist, on the record means that anything they say 
can be published and they're fine. Once they agree to do an interview with you, they're on notice that some things that they say may be broadcast. The minute they use the words off the record, it means like this is not, you can't say this. I'm going to tell you this for your information, for your information, for background, for just context, but I don't want this aired. So if someone doesn't say off the record in the journalism that we learned in journalism school and just being a journalist, then everything is free and then you can you can you can like go ahead and air it now as a courtesy you might want to not air something when I was a political commentator we would and then journalists as well we would learn about things during the course of our research investigation that weren't necessarily nice but if the information we learned wasn't relevant it was harmful it could destroy someone's life and family we had a choice to just not air that not just broadcast that as a courtesy also you want to be able to have access to certain people and as we see from all of the various different youtubers that are blowing up and getting in interviews this one example here some celebrities don't even grant to traditional journalists you know it's a, it's a different day and era like it's a different time so if you want to be able to get good the good interview and I know Shannon wants to continue to have his show where he's a space where people feel like they can come and talk and, and just share their side of the story now whether this stuff is true or not they, he, he wants to be that space he's only going to get that if he ob obliges and you know and that's something as a youtuber so similarly as DL said in his defense is that he knew it hurt her and she didn't like the segment and so he didn't do it he said he, th there was no need for a cease and desist letter so I don't know whether or not uh, that letter was sent or not Monique says she has her receipts I'm you know there's that's not really up for date but I just wanted to talk to you fellow content creators because hi hi if you don't know me my name is JJ Gat. so on this series I'm doing and potentially I might shift my entire channel I share laws related to content creator for fellow content creators because a lot of us for the lawyer don't have lawyer we're doing this on the side and there's no other channels or not, not a lot of spaces on social media giving you guys the rules related to your life as a creator so if you like that or you're interested in that sort of stuff if you like like this little response to that interview I want to invite you to subscribe share with your fellow creators hit the notification bell so you know whenever I come up with a new video and you want to watch these videos because the stuff that I'm sharing in these videos is stuff that's gonna matter may save you time and money and if you where you yourself want to have a cease and desist I have and if you're watching this on TikTok or you're watching this on YouTube or Instagram I have a shop where I sell cease and desist letters so you can get a cease and desist letter drafted by a lawyer um, that says everything you need to know and I have a podcast release so you're a podcaster and you would like your guest to have a guest release I have a podcast guest release form I also have a podcast syndication document so if you at some point be in a position where a broadcast or major network wants to also air your broadcast we know recently Joe Rogan just signed a like landmark deal Troy Santa Sharp is on his way if he haven't already signed a major deal or update to get his show syndicated on more networks or on another platform you can fill that out that syndication agreement and then finally podcast guest release so I have a podcast guest release syndication cease and desist letter and then also if you are doing the show by yourself or you have a co-host and you haven't yet signed a podcast co-host agreement I have that as well as you know infamously B Simone and her best friend split ways so you know it's a good idea to go ahead and sign something in advance before you know things happen with your fellow podcasters so get all those in my shop either my store my shop my and wherever you're watching this at and um yeah so I'm um, be well so if you're interested in more legal knowledge like this watch my next video when I'm going to be talking about FTC disclosures. So that's going to be next. In the meantime, watch this series next.